Hey everyone and welcome to another edition of the Blue Bridge and today I'll be looking at our bid for um, Villarreal goalkeeper Philip Jorgensen. I'll also be touching on the pre-match press conference ahead of our game against Wrexham which was held by Enzo Moresco and Rhys James. <laughs> So, um, yesterday I mentioned that um, we had agreed terms with uh, Philip Jorgensen, uh, the, uh, personal terms with him, and he wants to. he's indicated that he would like to come to Chelsea. So, what Chelsea have now done, they've gone in and put in a bid of £20 million, an official bid of €20 million Euro for him. Um, and But the thing is, um, his release clause is €45 million. Euro. Um, Chelsea believe they can get him for between 20 to 25 million euro and um, Fabrizio Romano said that that could seal the deal so I'm thinking that's half of nearly half his release clause so why if if, if they are happy to accept why are they happy to accept such a low offer is it because they don't really rate the keeper or maybe they need some finances I don't know but, but time will tell um, so yesterday I mentioned about um, some goalkeepers that we have been linked with in the past and I did a comparison between our current goalkeeper and two La Liga goalkeepers who we've been linked with. I'll put it in the description again above if you didn't watch that video yesterday. Um, so um, I haven't seen a lot of this guy but in my research what I've noticed is that okay short passing game is quite good that's probably why he, <clears throat> he suits Maresco's style. His long passing can be improved on a bit. <clears throat> Sorry. And, um, but his shots, although he had the most um, shots saved in La Liga last season, he still conceded 60, I think it was about 63 goals were conceded. And his shot save percentage isn't as high as it can be. Um, just one inch taller than Kepa as well. So aerially, is he going to... Is he going to be like Kepa, susceptible to long shots? Again, I don't know a lot about this goalkeeper. But again, what we're doing is buying potential. We're not buying a the finished article. And that's why I'm kind of um, not aligned to this transfer. Because I want somebody with a little bit of experience, a little bit of class. I did mention yesterday Diogo Costa would probably be my favourite. Um, why are we buying another goalkeeper um, who's not your finished article? in a key position. If we want to be challenging, if we want to be getting into top four, that we need to get a good spine. Liverpool, a prime example. It wasn't until Alisson and Van Dijk came in that they started to uh, become serious, a serious football team because they were no longer leaking goals. Last season, we conceded quite a lot of goals. That's why we do need a solid goalkeeper. You know, we've got an inexperienced backline as it is, and then adding to that, throwing into the pot an inexperienced goalkeeper, that can be a recipe for a disaster. Um, I'm not going to get too negative at the moment because I just don't know how this one will will play out. But again, that's what I'm saying. It's a gamble. We just don't know. And I don't really want to be gambled. As I, said, no, I keep saying, nothing's a sure thing. But when you get in somebody of the quality of a Diego Costa or something like that, you're probably more... Um, likely for it to succeed and getting in somebody like uh, a Jorgensen who is still an unknown entity. Um, but, um, and the only other thing is, uh, there's only up one other team who was after Marseille, there's now other suitors. And um, so um, it's between us and Marseille, according to reports. So, and I said, if Villarreal are happy to let him go, then that's a bit of warning signs for, for me there. Um, so, but I understand, I know a lot of people are upset about Petrovic, but when you look at, um, the, and because some people said goalkeeping is, is just, it's all about making saves, but in this modern game, it's not only just about making saves, it's how good you are with the ball, uh, your, with, your, with, your, your, with your feet as well, because you see that um, when, when Pep Guardiola went to Man City, the first thing he did was get a goalkeeper who can help with the build-up play. See, same thing what Mikel Arteta has done. And Allison's good with his feet. Jurgen yeah, Klopp's done that. So that's the that's the, the modern goalkeeper now it has to be more than just a shot stopper. He's got to be able to play with a ball at his feet also. So guys, 
Again, I mentioned it yesterday. Again, I'm asking you, what do you think of this uh, Philip Jorgensen uh, deal? Happy or not happy? Um, let me know your thoughts below. Right, I just want to touch on the press conference. It's the first time, if I'm not mistaken, that um, we've heard uh, Mariska talk to the press. And um, his first post uh, pre match uh, press conference. And he, you know, he's. He came across as quite a confident guy, positive. He's got his own ideas, and he wants to um, translate those ideas onto the into the, onto the field. Um, and he's the, I know I knew the question was going to come up about Enzo Fernandez, so he's kind of uh, put that to bed now. He said, "Look, Enzo Fernandez has issued an apology." Um, he's spoken to the other players who were involved, Wesley Fafana, I presume, and uh, and so hopefully uh, we we can draw a line over that. We won't know until Enzo Fernandez gets back gets back into the squad. But I don't know why some of our fan base are, are not letting this one go away. Um, and I feel that uh, if he's given his apology, then that should that should be it. And other people may have a different opinion, but for me. I've been on the end of racial abuse before, probably more than most growing up in the 80s and, and 70s where it was rife. Um, but for, for, for me, I, I mentioned it in the other video, it didn't go down well with some people about um, how I'm defending him. I'm not defending the player. It was totally wrong what he did. And I've, I said that in that video for those people who probably didn't watch all of it, just, just skimmed over it and assumed that I was defending him. I'm not defending the player. but. And the same point is, it, you know, what's what good is it lingering on with this and and causing a greater rift? We've got to put it to bed. If his apology is accepted by the players involved, if he learns by his mistake and doesn't do it again, then I'm okay with that. And um, people shouldn't tell me how I should feel as an individual. If you're not okay with it, that's your issues. But with me. That's what I'm like as a person. I don't hold grudges. I believe in forgiving and forgetting. I believe that if an apology is sincere, then you should accept it and move on. So that's the way I've been brought up, and that's the that's what my my morals are about. And you know, I don't hold grudges with with, with anybody. So I hope that's cleared everything up on that situation. Um, and quickly going on to what Reese James said. Um, Reese James, he said he's. Sometimes he gets too over enthusiastic. He pushes the boundaries and goes over the boundaries at times. That's why I think that's you know he got a couple of red cards last season. So he said he needs to learn how to to manage that more effectively, so that he doesn't get, keep picking up these silly cards. He's also said that he's gonna. He had the discussion um, with um, Enzo. Spoke to Enzo. He spoke to the other people involved as well. He, sh he came across as quite mature, and he showed a bit of leadership there. Not sure whether he's going to get the captain's armband at the moment. He's in the. He's in the. Uh, uh, as Maresco said, he's part of the um, management team as well as captain, but he hasn't said he's a captain. So he said he hopes that he'll carry on being the captain um, this season. But if he wants to carry on being the captain, he's got to show responsibility on the pitch as well. And that means not picking up silly yellow and red um, yellow and red cards. So um, you've got to be leading by example as well. So that's another thing that he's got to sort of brush up in his game. So games on tomorrow. And I didn't say this yesterday when I made it, or yesterday or the day before when I made the video. Um, and it's I think it's a disgrace what the club are doing, they're charging for friendly, pre-season friendlies. I know they want to, they need to make money because of all that money that they've spent, but charging fans for pre-season friendlies, I think that's in poor taste. And um, I won't be watching the games because I'm not, eight to the three o'clock in the morning. Um, there's no way I'm going to be staying up three o'clock in the morning to pay £4.99. No, it's not a lot of money, but it's just a principle. And, um, for me, I won't. I won't be doing that. Others may decide to do it, but but not me. So that's it, guys. That's the video. So what do you think? Stick your comments in the section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. That you'll be notified when I make a new video. So take care. Bye bye.